Oh, I said Hello and welcome to Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jai and we are broadcasting right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight is part two of our series, The History and of Liberian Diaspora Organization and their impact in Liberia and right here in the diaspora. Last week we spoke with some organizations including the Union of Liberian Association in the Americas. This week or today, we are speaking with some healthcare organizations. To discuss this, I have right here in studio Mrs. Emilio Tokwa Ade. She's the president of the Liberia Nurses Association in USA. Mrs. Ade works with Kaiser Permanente for 15 years as a nursing manager. Mrs. Ade, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, sir. Also, we have uh, from Philadelphia, Mr. Joseph Sacco. He's been joining us via video. Mr. Joseph Sacco is the chairman of the Liberia Medical Mission. He's a former refugee, a Liberian refugee from Guinea. When I was, uh, he's, he's a Liberian who sought refugee, refuge in Guinea, and since then he's been so passionate about refugee issues. Mr. Sacco will be joining us from the city of Philadelphia. Joe, if you are there, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. All right. Uh, and Joe will be on video, so be there to watch Joe. Uh, Joseph Sacco is also the founding chairman of the April Movement, that's the Alliance for Political Reform in Liberia. But tonight he's representing, he's representing the Liberia Medical Mission. So, uh, Emilia, welcome to Focus on Liberia, and uh, we are pleased to have you. Thank, thank you. Thank you again for thank coming. You, sir. All right. Let's start with uh, your organization. Tell us a little bit about the Liberia Nurses Association. The Liberian Nurses Association USA, LNA USA, so to speak, uh, was birthed in 2009 um, during a mission trip to Liberia with Consul General Cynthia Blanford. Uh, while on this trip, I recognized that there's a great need for education for healthcare practitioners in Liberia. And so when we returned to the States, I immediately registered the organization and pitched the idea to a few great nurses and we had our organization started. So, so, so who are your members and who's eligible to become a member? The members are predominantly Liberian nurses, but we are not, we are open to other nurses, nurses from other countries. Uh, we also have a subgroup, uh, Friends of the Liberian Nurses Association. 
So you could be an engineer or you could be a mechanic. Uh, everyone has, we believe that everyone has something to contribute to the organization. Mm -hmm. So it's open to everyone. Good, Inclu yes. including uh, CNAs and doctors. Absolutely. Good. Yes. So, so what's the purpose? I know you have a mission. Really, what's the need? What's the purpose, the mission for this organization that you're trying to address? The purpose, well, I will read to you a pertinent line from our mission statement okay. is to foster sustainable health for Liberians. We commit to providing education and services for the sake of a wholesome being. So our major purpose is to educate Liberian health professionals and to educate the general Liberian community to take care of themselves. So right now, you're, 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 you're working with, your target people will be Liberians here in the United States or in the diaspora and also in Liberia? In the diaspora and Liberia. Great. That, 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 that's, that's good. But also, oh, I, I know uh, you've been involved in some activities, you know, so as to carry out this mission. Yes. If you don't mind, can share some of those with us. Well, um, I was just having a conversation with Yah. We... We have been involved in community education. We've been involved in annual health fairs here in the States. We've also been involved in uh, Liberia. Back uh, in 2014, during the Ebola crisis, the Liberian Nurses Association got together a document, educational document, that we shared at the town hall meeting and that we encourage Liberians to share with their families back home uh, just basic information about what Ebola was and preventive measures that people could take to prevent themselves from getting the disease. We have also collaborated with organizations, uh, International Christian Fellowship Church, ICF. We've collaborated with um, the Claxton community for health fairs. We've uh, collaborated with Kaiser Permanente, of course, We've had health fair, you know, with uh, the help of Kaiser Permanente. We've done other big things. We've collaborated with um, Emory University and the Lillian Carter Center. Um, the Lillian Carter Center. Uh, we they've assisted us in the project to create an educational video um, that will send back to Liberia. Uh, that will help Liberian nurses uh, in terms of an uh, annual recertification, not recertification, just as a resource to help them brush up on their skills. So these are amongst the many things we've done since our inception in 2011. Oh, that, that's, that's impressive. So how does your membership look like? How big is your organization? How many members are we talking about? Okay, so that's a challenge. Membership is a challenge. Um, when we started, we, um, we had about close to 50 nurses that uh, registered with the organization. Even though a vast majority of our members are in Georgia, we solicited membership from other states. We have a few members out of state. The thing is, uh, signing up on the paper is one thing, but the mm -hmm. commitment level mm -hmm. is another thing. So that has been an issue, commitment, time, commitment time so that's that's a serious problem for us so right now we have about probably maybe 10 nurses that are active active actively involved in happenings or activities of the organization so, so what are the uh, required what is required of a member because you talk about commitment so what are the things that you're supposed to be doing that uh, most people are not really committing themselves to your time, your time, the Bible says we need your time, give your time, your talent, and your treasure. We need those three. We need those three. In order for any viable organization, we need a commitment, we need consistency. We need your time. We need the commitment. I couldn't say it better. You know, time, we need the interest. So just, you know, assign a small bit of your time to the organization. And you'd be surprised to see how much we will flourish and how we'll grow. So, so if you are, if there are nurses listening to you now, what are you going to tell them throughout the United States? I want to encourage uh, nurses to join us, uh, and, and and I think I'm. I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but uh, what I find out is that um, we have a lot of fragmented organizations, healthcare organizations. So I want to encourage all healthcare professionals. Remember, it's not only 
the organization is not limited to only nurses. So if you're in a healthcare field, I want to encourage you to join the organization. We want to collaborate. We want to merge with other organizations and form one big organization because we believe that we create a greater impact if we come under one umbrella. So I encourage each nurse, just find it in your heart, find a time, um, reach out. Reach out to myself. We have a Facebook page. You know, reach out to any nurses in Georgia that most of the nurses in Georgia know about the organization already. Most of them, not all of them. So reach out to a nurse. Reach out to anybody in Georgia and, and ask. Reach out to Lama and ask about the Liberian Nurses Association. And we, you will be contacted. And, you know, let's get the ball rolling. Right. Most of the time people join organization, all they do is to give. You know, sometimes people want incentives. Okay, why should I become a member? So if there are nurses asking that question, what will you tell them? Well, in life you can, um, you know, in life you have got to learn to give. You can always receive. I believe that we've received a lot. So, you know, just the gratification, you know, just the fact. For me, I don't know about other people, but for me, the fact that I'm giving back is, is big for me. My it, it tells me that I'm walking my purpose. As humans, I think our purpose in life is to give back, and you'll be surprised of the, 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 the gratification you will get back. So just that feeling of giving back, knowing that you're helping somebody. So think about it. If it makes sense to you, that should be a motivator, a motivating factor to join the organization. There are uh, plenty of uh, Liberians who I say working as CNA who always want to become nurses. And you have other Liberians who have uh, maybe gone to nursing school mm -hmm. and they are struggling to pass their state board. Is there anything in your organization that you can do to help these people? Yes. And, and like I said, our major platform is education, educating nurses. So we do serve as mentors. Um, to nurses or aspiring nurses, we are open, uh, we are available, you know, just give us a call. That, that, that's great. If you just join us, you are watching Focus on Liberia and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Focus on Liberia is a public service to the Liberians in the diaspora and people across the globe. We come to you every Sunday at 7 p.m. and we broadcast from Atlanta, Georgia. Today we're discussing Liberian diaspora organization and their impact both here in the United States and back home in Liberia. I have with me uh, Mrs. Emilio Ade, who's uh, representing the Liberia, Liberian Nurses, Nurses Association. And on the phone, on the video from Philadelphia, we have Mr. Joseph Sacco representing the Liberian Medical Mission. Do we have Mr. Sacco ready on the line? Joseph, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Okay, we are experiencing well, some technical difficulties, but uh, you have uh, Joseph Sako. He's going to be joining us shortly from the city of Brother the Love. Let's go back to uh, Amelia from Liberian Nurses Association. Oh, I know you've done some work in Liberia. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, what is it like working in Liberia? It is very frustrating. Uh, people... It's hard for people to follow processes and procedures, so it's very, very frustrating. Um, but once you uh, align yourself with a group that knows what your mission is and, and, and what your goals are and, and, and start a conversation prior to even arriving, um, you know, you will be successful or almost successful in what you went there to achieve. But the system is very frustrating. Hmm. Yeah. So, so right here in uh, in in Georgia or in America, I know you you also have goals, things that you are working on currently. What's in your pipeline? Um. 
things that we're working on, first of all, we want to continue to maintain our 501c3 status. So that's major. Um, we're working on a major fundraiser. We, want to, we don't have a date set yet, um, but we're working on um, a major fundraiser that will help us to make another mission trip to Liberia. We're working on identifying communities of needs that will benefit from our services here in the United States because we, do, we, we don't want to just take from this community or from this country and not give back. So we have got to be able to do something in the community. So we're working on identi identifying those communities. Uh, again, um, membership. We need membership. Uh, we need all hands on deck. Uh, you know, we just, we need money. Period. Yes. So that we can carry out the, the things that we want to carry out. Agree. No, money is always. Yeah. And do you have any funding source, or how do you get funded? We're self-funded. We're self-funded. Uh, we we've done different programs. We've done a walkathon. We've done uh, food sales. We've done a raffle. So we're pretty uh, much fun, uh, uh, self-funded. Uh, uh, members also pay their dues, you know, the ones that are committed pay their dues, and that's how we're funding ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is it true that nurses make a lot of money? Maybe let me be <laughs> I plead the faith on that. <laughs> it's a myth. It's people think that nursing is this glamorous field that you make a lot of money, but you have to invest into nursing emotionally, psychologically. It's a great investment, so it's not just about the money. If you go into nursing just because you want to make money, you're not going to succeed. Yeah. You have to be in it. Right. So if you are out there trying to go to nursing because you want to make money, talk to Amelia. We have someone on the call. Call out your name and where you're calling from. Anthony from Delaware. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. Here, Focus on Liberia is about Liberia and for Liberia. Today, we are discussing Liberian diaspora organization and their impact on Liberia. We have in studio uh, the uh, president of the Liberian Nurses Association USA, and we have on the video uh, Mr. Joseph Sacco, who is the president of the Liberia Medical Mission. Thank you so much for contributing and thank you for the work that you are doing in Liberia. That's what we're talking about and what we're doing here on Focus on Liberia is to uh, showcase who we are as Liberians, the best in us, and uh, so that people will know us besides what they already know. So thank you for your contribution. At this time, we'll go back to, uh, we'll go to Joseph in Philadelphia, our guest, Mr. Sacco. Hello, do you hear me? Mr. Sacco, can you get me? I can hear you. Hear me? Bro. Hello, can you hear me? Mr. Sacco, tell me about the Liberal <laughs> Medical Mission. <laughs> when you get started and what you're doing. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Mr. John, did you hear me? Go ahead. Labro Medical Mission. 
Can you hear me, Joseph? Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right, good. I couldn't hear you, and I wanted to make sure that you and your listening audience are getting me clearly. All right, well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, to your show. The Liberia Medical Mission, I came into being uh, sometimes last year, and um, it was organized by Liberians as well as the non Liberians. The membership comprises of uh, people from uh, all over West Africa. We have Liberians, Salonians, uh, Guineans, as well as uh, U.S. nationals. So the organization has uh, three core components. One is uh, general medicine. The other one is mental health. And uh, lastly, we have ophthalmology. So those are the uh, three main components that we have in the Liberal Medical Mission. And so uh, I know you, what, what is, does your membership look like? Well, like I said, comprises of uh, people from all walks of life. We do have nurses, we have uh, uh, biomedical engineers, we have uh, ophthalmologists, we have uh, mental health, we have social workers, okay? We even have executive directors. So it is an interdisciplinary organization. I remember what you can from all varying backgrounds. So it's not only limited to uh, people in the uh, medical field. I, uh, you know, we do have uh, people of different professions that are coming together to form the uh, American mission. What are some of the activities you involve in or simply put, what do you do? Well, primarily we do mission trips to Liberia. Um, so last year we were in Liberia um, on the uh, medical mission where we provided uh, free medical services to Liberians that are in dire need of basic medical services. We served the people of Mount Sorata County. Um, we also went to Bassett County. Uh, we, uh, we went to Magidi and uh, went to Kipnow County as well. Um, that operation, we focus on three main areas, which are the core of uh, our operations. We were able to uh, organize a mental health workshop for workers at um, Carter Center. I, a mental health lead person who is Dr. William L. Siemens. I organized a few days workshop for the mental health workers. We also organized uh, a workshop for ex combatants, uh, which went pretty well. Uh, and also targeted a few schools to organize a, a workshop for young girls as well, which was uh, well attended. So those are the areas that uh, you know, we are focusing on, and finally, the, uh, the capacity building of the Liberia, uh, you know, uh, health force. So what we do is that when we get in the country, we pair the visiting nurses and the visiting doctors um, to that of all the Liberian uh, nurses and doctors, so that they can exchange knowledge. Um, and that has been going very well. So, I was looking at what you do, and I, I read that you had a net of mission trip. It's not only in Liberia. You had a mission trip to uh, to Guinea. 
Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, like I said, uh, a lot of people uh, look at the Library of Medical Mission and say, well, the, uh, the organization is a misnomer. Uh, and <laughs> so it should have been uh, West Africa Medical Mission. Um, so last year, we actually uh, did a cross border operation in Zeri Curry. Um, you know, the touch base with uh, um, a city that, or a country that received well over more than 100,000 uh, Liberian uh, and Syrian refugees during the 90s, during the uh, head of the Civil War. So it was, a, you know, it's intended at least to to tell the people of uh, Guinea thank you, and uh, we are planning uh, more as well in the uh, in the future. So, um, but right now we want to, you know, focus on Liberia, and uh, we have gotten a lot of requests from our Ivory Coast, from our Sierra Leone, and uh, Guinea as well, uh, even um, as far as uh, Mali, uh, to organize a mission trip to those countries. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, the goal now is to kind of, uh, you know, focus on Liberia, build the capacity of our healthcare uh, force in Liberia, and uh, begin to do a lot of great stuff in Liberia. And uh, from that point, we'll be extending the operation to uh, all of West, West African countries. So, Joseph, uh, how much does one of these medical mission trip cost? And, and how do you pay for that? Excellent question. <laughs> you know, this is a, a million dollar question that I usually get even when I'm doing interviews in Liberia. Approximately, we it's estimated around uh, twenty-five to thirty thousand uh, dollars, you know, per trip. But you know. When you are committed to doing something, by the way, like uh, my colleague uh, Amelia, you know, stated, Latin America Mission is uh, self-funded. I uh, am grateful to the men and women of this uh, uh, organization. I, we have a lot, lot of committed members, and I thank God for instilling such a commitment in the uh, in the hearts of all. Uh, these men and women that are working that uh, their commission. So we do fundraiser, and uh, at times that, you know, to some extent, uh, doesn't work to our expectation. So we do ask every missioner to kind of on the right, their own cause of uh, transportation and, uh, and stuff like that. So if we're carrying about 20 people, uh, each individual will, you know, will have to pay between $1,500 to $1,600. So the Liberia Medical Mission, uh, in collaboration with our local agencies, will secure uh, accommodation for the, uh, uh, for the missioners, including uh, feed, uh, feeding and transportation. So thanks to the... Uh, Thank, thank, thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. And uh, we also <coughs> invited uh, Mr. Frederick Jewe on the phone. Jewe had a contribution because he also has uh, an organization that he wants to talk about. Okay, hold on. I'm going to Frederick, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Frederick. Yes, I'm here. Okay, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Just tell us briefly about your organization and uh, what you're involved in. We're about to, before we take a break. Thank you very much. Um, we have established an organization called Africa Center for Law and Human Rights, mainly uh, three Liberian lawyers, including some non lawyers, uh, in Monrovia. Our intention is to focus mostly on. Um, Suicide detainees and the impact of suicide detention on those who are arrested arbitrarily and detained. Uh, we will hope to formally open our office in Liberia around January 18, 20, something like that. The hope is that we will 
want to focus on the uh, the healthcare impact of suicide prevention. We want to look at the mental health impact of suicide prevention. We want to look at the psychosocial economic impact of suicide prevention. Uh, we want to look at suicide prevention and perhaps torture and suicide prevention centers. We want to look at sustainability and suicide prevention. Uh, this is a five-year, five-county project, meaning we intend to cover Maserato, uh, Maserato, Pomi, uh, Maldivi, Pong, and Grand Basso County. Those are the accessible countries in Liberia that we want to start with, and then ex- extend ourselves to five other countries, uh, grouping the countries in Liberia into a component of five. Uh, the hope is that at the end of the day, we hope to serve 5,000 uh, people at the beginning per year in five counties, meaning that we begin with much rather than the country that I just named. So the hope is to ensure that we can have a watch on who is arrested, who is detained. Not only do they get to be we help to get them free, but we want to be able to rouse them uh, by way of funding through. Uh, rehabilitation centers as well as vocational training centers that they will come out and return to the society as people who are terrible uh, to be able to sustain themselves. Great. I'm Th- sure that's what we're all about. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Frederick, Councillor Frederick Jewe. Uh, oh, stand right there. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking to you more. We're going to be talking to Frederick Jewe, Councillor Frederick Jewe. We're going to be talking to our guests in the studio and also on the, on the video phone. At this time, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back.
Discussing Liberia Diaspora Organization and their impact right here in the United States and in Liberia. With me to discuss this, I have in studio Mrs. Emilio Tokba Ade. She's the president of the Liberian Nurses Association USA. I have on the phone Councillor Frederick Jewe. And uh, I have by video Mr. Joseph Sacco, the chairman of the Liberian Medical Mission. I turn to you, Emilio, about uh, you heard the different organizations. You heard from uh, Joseph in Philadelphia what they are doing with the Liberal Medical Mission. You heard from Frederick Jewell what they are doing with uh, the, uh, the legal group. That brings me to the question of uh, collaboration. I don't know to what extent that your group is collaborating with other similar groups to make a big impact in what you are doing. Well, and and um, thank you for that question or that point. Um, I think I spoke earlier about collaboration and merging. I think it's important, again, to um, the sustainability of a viable organization. We would love to collaborate with any groups. I see that um, the, the first group, uh, the medical mission, is that the name of the yeah. group? We have shared goals. We have shared goals, so there's a lot we can work together on uh, and just, you know, create a huge impact in Liberia. So the Liberian Nurses Association USA is definitely open to collaborating, to partnership, because that's how we're going to succeed, right? Um, our, in our country, we say united we stand and divided we fall. So we don't want to fall. We certainly want to stand and remain standing. So yes, we definitely would love to collaborate to, to form a partnership with any groups. I know every organization like yours have some challenges, but uh, let's talk about the opportunities first. Can you be a little bit more specific? Right. You say let's talk about the opportunities. It, right. What are you, you first? You have challenges or things that are that are giving you a hard time for mm -hmm. which you are not meeting your goals. Right. But I know there are other things that are going for you. Let's talk about those first. Right. Uh, Liberians are very talented. We don't even know that about ourselves. We're very talented. We have the gift. In America, they say the gift of gap. We know how to talk. We know how to convince yeah. people. So we could use those gifts in the right area. Um, you know, solicit organizations here that have a listening ear to uh, contribute to our cause. We could do that. Um, there are a lot of things that we could do just 
to you know get things going for us so that's one opportunity that I, I can readily identify that will help us and, and what's the level okay let's also go to Liberia I know you have done some work in Liberia yes tell me about your experience and you know, if there are any challenges and the opportunities that are there to do more Certainly there were challenges, again, the processes and procedures, but overall the experience was good. We did get buy-in from the government, believe it or not. Our experience was good. Um, we, we contacted the right individuals several months in advance before we went to Liberia on the mission trip, and we made plans. We had several meetings. So, and because of that, our mission was successful. Why in Liberia, we were able to get our supplies uh, cleared from custom um, for little or nothing. We were able to get storage for our supplies until we distributed them to uh, the designated areas. We were able to uh, host a three-day workshop for healthcare professionals in Liberia, which was very, very successful. Um, so we, we, we did a lot of things back home. And because of proper planning and liaising with the right people, we were able to accomplish those things. Great. And, and your, your experience with the um, port, that kind of in stark contrast to the experiences of others. So I'm very glad to hear that because some of these things, are, maybe they are not true. But you had a very positive experience clearing your things from the port. So that, that's, that's impressive. I, I love to hear that. Let me just add that it was not without any hurdles. We oh, did okay. have some hurdles along the way. But uh, looking at the big picture, um, everything went, you know, as desired. Even though we had some small hurdles along the way. Yeah, okay. Th thank you. Let me go to Joseph in uh, Philadelphia. Mr. Sacco and uh, the Liberal Medical Mission. Mr. Sacco, I want you to uh, speak to your experiences uh, delivering these supplies and your medical mission to Liberia. What the challenges have been? Uh, thank you. I think uh, our challenge is um, similar to that of Amelia's. Uh, with uh, a good cooperation and collaboration from the uh, Ministry of uh, Health, um, specifically Dr. Don and uh, Dr. Kedem, the Minister and Deputy Minister of, of Health, respectively. And um, thanks to the um, partnership with Honorable um, Sai Joseph and um, our local coordinating committee, um, other folks that we have on the ground. So, you know, things were a little bit, um, you know, better. I mean, there were hurdles at some point. In fact, last year, we had to leave one of our containers behind us to be distributed because of uh, some administrative uh, bottlenecks that we ran into. And um, ultimately, we had to you know, leave because our days in Liberia were off. Um, but all in all, hey, not too bad. I, even though we will expect more from the government I, in terms of uh, incentivizing these uh, you know, professional librarians as well as our non-librarian professionals that are coming in terms of uh, expediting the process of uh, you know, clearing, because these things the team is there to complement the efforts of the government, after all. So we're there to help our own people. So I, you know, I think uh, this should give, uh, give us more help in trying to get our things to where they, they need to you know, be. So how do you actually identify those areas that need help? I know you've made a couple of trips to Liberia. How do you identify which area, which sector, which county, which region that you need to uh, supply or help? Well, you know, every mission that we have organized, uh, the mission usually have uh, twofold. 
one, we will be uh, carrying at least a one or two person team uh, to do for assessment. And uh, in collaboration and partnership with for our trusted uh, partners on the ground, I, we will do a little bit of assessment. And uh, what we also have been doing is that for areas that you know we served during previous missions, if we realize that there are more needs in those communities, and uh, these communities generally are communities that uh, you know, you know, less I can say less privileged communities where highly uh, unemployed and uh, these people really need all the services that they deserve. Um, we, we sometimes have to go back to these communities repeatedly to serve them. Um, and at times, uh, in conjunction with the Minister of Health, uh, we will also get some set of a guidance from uh, the Minister of Health and from the local authorities. They will write to the Labor Medical Mission that, hey, we need help. And uh, we have a local coordinating committee. We will reach out to them to say, hey, can you do for assessment of these needs for us since we are here, they will get back to us. When they get back to us, then uh, we, we meet here as a team and decide and, uh, you know, do our due diligence as well. And we include those uh, communities in our next mission. Uh, and uh, while on the ground. And, uh, oh, yeah. so I have in studio uh, Mrs. Emilio Ade, who, who is heading the Labrador Nurses Association. And I know there are other medical associations of Liberians here in the United States. To what extent are you uh, liaising or collaborating or working along with any of those groups, or if that's something that is in your pipeline? First of all, I let me let me commend uh, you know my dear sister Amelia for I you know at least the thought of putting. Um, or professional nurses together, and also thinking about Liberia. In terms of uh, liaising with uh, different, I know there are, uh, I don't know how many, how many, uh, you know, uh, health organization that are managed by Liberia in the uh, US, but I know there are, there, there are a few out there. Um, you know, it was a couple of years, uh, 2014, during the uh, Ebola outbreak that I heard about the Liberian nursing Association in the U.S. and uh, the the way I got to know about it, it was through well, organizing a Ebola workshop at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. That was organized by us. Um, C Max C Max from uh, Texas attended our um, workshop, and he told me about the uh, Liberian Nurses. So what I told him was that, hey, listen, we we have more than a fifteen to twenty nurses. Okay, and uh, we also have uh, a lot of uh, non labyrinth nurses that are part of this uh, labyrinth medical mission. So I think it will be a good idea uh, for us to, you know, collaborate. If we are doing a mission trip, we want to encourage as many of uh, uh, our nurses, labyrinth, labyrinth nurses, to go. Because what we also do during those missions is to educate our people. That's what we've been doing. We went to Barca, we have one of our nurses. Who you know who's from Basa? So I she took her time to educate people on management of these uh, diabetes and uh, hypertension diseases um, in Basa, and uh, that actually you know worked very well with these patients. All right, they even appreciated that more than uh, you know the uh, the dispensation of medication. So that's the kind of a strategy that we have been uh, you know carrying. So. Working with the Liberal Nurses Association of America, that's going to be, uh, you know, uh, very huge. And uh, we can do a lot uh, when we uh, partner, when we collaborate in carrying these missions to Liberia. And thank you again so much for the work you're doing. At this time, we'll go to um, Frederick Jewell, who's on the phone. Frederick is a... Uh, part of the uh, the legal group. Frederick, what's the name of that group? And uh, again, please uh, summarize your mission. It is called Africa Center for Law and Human Rights. Uh, we are both a legal and human rights institution. 
uh, our mission is to focus mostly on assisting free trade detainees uh, within with only count, five countries at a time in Maserado, Bomi, uh, Maldives, Bong, and Grand Basso County. We hope to cover this country within a period of five years. Uh, with the hope of serving uh, 5,000 Guineas per year in five countries. All right. How did you come up with this idea of uh, forming this group? Where did it come from and how long have you been existing? Uh, Africa Center for Law and Human Rights was established in 2016, June 15. And um, we visited, I went to Liberia in June, mid June, uh, and I came back early uh, July. While there, we basically went to go see whether we could find office space, uh, start actual work on the ground. And so we were told that they were pretty close to just being at the Manila Central Prison alone. They were close, uh, there were people close to between 6,000 to 9,000. Uh, and we were concerned with the number. We spoke with the Chief Justice while right there and wanted to know uh, whether anything country was being done to get those people out of there uh, or whether they had been brought to trial. And the Chief Justice said, well, the, there is the, um, the peace, there is the uh, defense, uh, what do you call it, public defenders. Uh, but because people are supported, the public defenders are supported mostly by the state. And do not have outside resources, the work is very limited. So we visited uh, some of the magistrates to find out how many people to deal with in jail for the And the press were not able to give us any uh, country studio. So we told that the matter may have been very high, the some of people in prison could be very high. Uh, and so we need to not just point ourselves into it. So that's what we could start to see the news starting to the court to start to look at the ordinary people who might be in jail and have nothing lawyers beyond one year. Uh, or to be at the police station and at the police house, at the police station, and have no reason to be uh, taken to court because you don't have these accounts at all. Uh, but we want us to look at this in a more holistic and comprehensive way, meaning that we're not just going to court the best people free. So we wanted to get them free and work with the medical team on the ground to be able to assess. Okay, Frederick, can you can you raise? I'm losing you. Can you raise your can you raise your voice, Frederick? Frederick. Uh, we also wanted to look at the mental health component. Uh, we want to look at how do they sustain themselves when they get out of there. Okay. The whole thing of things that we should do. All right. Fred, please provide for us your contact, or uh, if there are people who need the, uh, the service that you render, how can they get in contact with you? Or if you are... Uh, we have a website. We have a website. Uh, it's AfricaCenterForLaw.com. Uh, you can check there. The information what we do is on our site. I must also add that we are only having the international office here. All of our work will be done in Nigeria. On the ground, not from here. So lawyers will go in uh, January. I'll be gone for a month to be able to clean from lawyers on the ground. The first five lawyers uh, to be able to start the process and see from money from prison money from. Thank you. Thank thank you, Frederick. And stand by. We'll be coming back to you to uh, provide more information. For the uh, for in your final thought, so let me go back to uh, Joseph in uh, Philadelphia, uh, and and Joseph, or uh, what I want to find out from you, Joseph, I want to find out uh, some of the conditions. I know right now in Liberia we have uh, call it a, pol a political stalemate or constitutional crisis or what have you, but. Let me go back to you and ask you a, some, what are some of the conditions 
you expect in Liberia for whatever you are doing to flourish politically? What are some of the political conditions that you expect? Well, <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great question. Well, uh, I'm just hoping that the current uh, political impasse um, will come to a pass. And um, my hope and prayers for Liberia is to, you know, see, see a, a country that has um, good leadership, uh, leadership that is open to um, innovations, leadership uh, that will work with a diaspora organization to do a lot of great stuff for fellow Liberians. Um, that is my uh, hope and prayers. Um, but just to come back to, you know, current something, it's actually been a little bit stressful for me uh, and uh, my colleagues that are planning uh, the next mission. Uh, currently, we have nearly about 40 uh, volunteers, I more than half of uh, all my non-Liberians that I willing to travel to Liberia to provide specialized um, you know, services to the people of Liberia. Um, but what I am uh, afraid of is that whatever I, you know, electionary process that needs to, you know, start, if it's going to be rerun or run off or whatever, you know, run the, the way I have. Let it be done as soon as possible so that the ordinary people of Liberia will have an opportunity to live peacefully and uh, to also, you know, receive some of these uh, needed services from uh, organizations such as the Liberia Medical Mission. And uh, we plan to carry uh, more than five million uh, worth of assistance uh, next year to the people of Liberia and uh, an exploratory uh, team from the Children's Hospital and the University of Penn to kind of focus on uh, capacity building. So uh, it works, you know. Joe, uh, how does anyone become part of Labrador Medical Mission? Well, it's very simple. I, the, the organization is actually open to everyone. Uh, one, I, before you join, ask yourself I, about your commitment uh, because whatever you do, you need to commit some time uh, to doing it. So all you need to do is that um, we are actually reconstructing our website. It's not live yet, but it will be uh, in probably a week or two. Uh, go and sign up with your information. And uh, if uh, you're interested in mental health, uh, we have a mental health lead. If you are interested in ophthalmology, and uh, we have another person that is leading that, and that general uh, listen. And just to, Amelia said that we share some, a lot of our goals. One of the things that we actually look at to is uh, to encourage some of our nurses and some of our doctors that are coming from Liberia and they want to pursue their, their dream of becoming nurses in America. We also want to serve as uh, an entity that will, will kind of uh, pay them and uh, see what we can have a mentor for them, um, encourage us, uh, you know, um, and those that went into that field. So we will connect them with uh, our nurses and uh, they will also mentor them, encourage them to go and uh, provide them the necessary help that they need in order to succeed. Thank you, Joseph. And uh, I'll be coming back to you in a minute for your final thought. Let me go to you, Emilia. Uh, and I hope Joseph is thinking about that too. There is uh, always some do not fatigue. You know, Liberians and other people that are given to whatever organization, they get tired. Or even, what other plans do you have to uh, keep your, you know, keep your, your, your organization going? Besides, let's say at a time when donors are no longer bringing the money or even your members are not committed to their, to their deal payment. Well, we have to re-strategize. We have to continuously find ways and means in which we can motivate our members and donors to contribute to the organization. So it's an ongoing thing, uh, even though, of course, there's donor fatigue, but we have to come up with strategies that will uh, be of interest to 
people that want to uh, donate to the organization? I, I have a, a Facebook question from uh, Lovesta Phillips, Lovesta K. Phillips Jolo. He said, how does one join the Liberian Nurses Association? Please. She probably missed it. Lovesta, um, call this number, 678-472-6008. And we give you details. If you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia, and we are focusing on Liberia diaspora organizations and their impact in Liberia. <coughs> and uh, at this time, we want to uh, be getting our final thoughts. We start with Mr. Frederick Jewe, Council of Frederick Jewe of the African Center for Law. Mr. Jewe, your final thoughts. Thank you, Fred, and thank you so much for the work you're doing. Thank you for joining us today on Focus on Liberia. At this time, I want to go to uh, Mr. Joseph Sacco in Philadelphia for your final comments. All right, great. Um, again, I want to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share uh, our thoughts and uh, the emissions goals. One thing that I'd like to emphasize is that um, we as Liberians uh, need to do everything possible, um, you know, to contribute towards some of these uh, reinitiatives. Um, Sometimes when you send out invitation for fundraiser, many a times it is only uh, non-Liberians that, you know, attend some of these functions. I mean, sometimes it's uh, frustrating this happening, but we want to encourage uh, our fellow Liberians to um, please contribute to some of these um, initiatives. I know we have talked about uh, donor fatigue. This is where the uh, partnership collaborations uh, come in. Uh, we have launched a $25,000 uh, you know, GoFundMe page and a crowdfunding. I, you know, within a week, we have gotten uh, an anonymous person who have uh, who have seen our work, who have seen our work in the Philadelphia area, and uh, just inbox us that every year uh, they are willing to give like the Remedy Commission. They will be responsible to uh, underwrite the cost of transporting two forty-four containers to Liberia every year for the Liberia Medical Commission, which will save us ten thousand dollars every year. So, meaning that for our goal of 25,000 uh, for this year's mission, just one person from an organization who's a non-Liberian said, uh, okay, I will take up the 10,000 hours in terms of uh, transporting those something. So we want to encourage um, everyone, uh, this is our country, do not say, well, the government has to do it all, well, even this great country. There yeah, are private citizens that come in at least uh, to fill the gap. Uh, again, join us. Uh, we'll be in Liberia in February. This will be one of the biggest missions. We have some of our colleagues calling from Australia and London that would like to uh, join our mission uh, next year. So we want to invite all the uh, professional organizations that are in uh, 
USA and a lot of places to join us next year for this mission. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph, for being our guest. We really appreciate you and appreciate the work you are doing. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, let me go back to my studio guest. Uh, before your final thoughts, uh, Emilio, is there anything about your organization that you would like to change so as to make it more impactful? Or anything that you want to work on or improve? Yes, I spoke um, earlier about the commitment level, you know, giving your time, uh, giving your treasures, which means that give some money, right? And, and <laughs> time, treasure, what was the third one? Your time, your treasure, and your talent. Yeah, so we need those three. They are key component to the viability of this organization or any organization for that matter. So I'm calling on all nurses to please, please, please give us a call. Come on board. Again, it's an all-hands-on-deck approach we're using because we can't do it without you. Sometimes the bad news go further than the good news. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time you hear that uh, Liberians don't like to work together or Liberians are not this and all the negative. But uh, looking at what you're doing, listening to uh, Joseph from Philadelphia and Councillor Jaywe, mm -hmm. I think... Uh, we have something to be proud of. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And so for those who are maybe somewhere and think that uh, librarians in the United States are not doing much, what do you have to tell them? Let's boast about this now. Well, be encouraged. Uh, <laughs> look at these three organizations as an example. And um, just, you know, uh, pick, you know, or even start an organization or something in your area. I mean, if you're in the healthcare area certainly we want you to join us because we don't want to be fragmented right but um if you're in if you're an engineer you could start an engineering association so do something positive do something positive that will impact uh, uh liberia any final thoughts um again um i'm calling on all nurses everywhere or even nursing organizations uh even if you have five members or ten members I'm calling on everyone. Uh, you can reach us even through Lama. We need to hang heads and we need to get together. And Mr. Sacco, is that his name, Mr. Sacco? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be reaching out to you so that we can collaborate on a lot of things um, because, again, we have shared goals. So I'm going to be reaching out to you. I would like to thank this group for allowing us to use your platform to talk about our platform. So, again, thank you to all of you. Um, you know, Liberia would be great. We can make Liberia great again. So let's make Liberia great again. Let's think like a Liberian. Don't think like an individual. Think like a Liberian. And, and that's the whole point about focus on Liberia because at the end of the day, Liberia is the only home that we have. And uh, there is no one who can make it better for us except with ourselves. By the grace of God, we have left Liberia and we have gone across the globe. We have uh, acquired education, some wealth. And uh, it is incumbent upon us to uh, look back and give back to our country. And uh, I want to thank you so much, Emilia, for coming. I want to thank Joseph on the video call. And also want to thank Councillor Jewe on the phone for uh, accepting our invitation to come and join us here at Focus on Liberia. I also want to thank those of you who are watching by television, who are watching us via Facebook, and uh, those that are our studio guests. I want to thank those that are watching us via YouTube. I want to thank our producer, Mrs. Yasendi Martinpe, our engineer, Stephanie Setro, and, and our studio manager, Ms. Reverend, no, Evangelist Patrick Ansa. <laughs> Focus on Liberia comes to you every week, Sunday at 7 p.m. We are self-funded, and... Uh, we will be counting on your support to continue bringing you this program live from Atlanta, Georgia. You can advertise with us or you can just drop us a line. If there are other issues that you want us to talk about or you have questions and comments, please do not hesitate to call us or send us an email. Focus on Liberia at gmail.com or focus on Liberia marketing at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter, on YouTube, and also on Facebook. Until then, from me to you, Thank you so much for joining us. Good night and God bless you. Thank you, Dennis.